Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at solids of revolution integrals. So we have find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bound by the curves y equals x and y equals square root x about the line y equals 1. So for problems of this type it's of vital importance that you get a picture of what's going on. So we need to get a sketch of the two equations that we started with. So the task here is to, we're going to be rotating about the line y equals 1, which is a horizontal line that passes through the y-axis at 1. And the curves in question are the lines, well we have y equals x, which we'll get a rough sketch of, and we'll do these in different colors too. We have y equals x, and we have y equals square root x. And it's important to note that between 0 and 1, the graph of y equals square root x will go above the line y equals x. This is of vital importance because this is going to determine how we set up our integral. And now we only care about this, the region between 0 and 1 because these are the two places that both of the equations intersect. So we're really just going to be zoning in on this section here between the two curves. Well, we have a line and a curve. So the task is to find the volume generated by spinning this section between these two equations around the line y equals 1. That's our rotation axis. But the concept that we really need to zone in on, which helps us set up the integrals, is this disk and washer method. So basically what we're doing is we're starting out with a big radius which we could label with capital R, and we're going to be cutting out a smaller radius, which we'll label with lowercase r. So it's like we're starting with a big circle, and we could say that this circle has area, and we'll label it as pi capital R squared. And we're cutting out this little circle with area pi lowercase r squared, here like this. And when we cut this out, Notice that we're left with what's called like a, a disc and washer. It's like a little, it's a little thin disc with the center cut out of it, determined by how big the little radius is. But now since we're looking for volume, which is three dimensions, we can introduce another dimension of height. So it's like we're in some sense building a cylinder of some sort. But this little height here is infinitesimally, is an infinitesimal. It's very small and it's labeled as, in this case, dx, because we're going to be spinning around a horizontal line. So in this case, we're going to label it with dx. So the strategy here, to find the volume of these little disks, we're going to be using this equation here, that we have pi capital R squared minus pi lowercase r squared, all of this times dx. But it's in some sense just replacing this idea of a cylinder, but we're just kind of like cutting out the center of the cylinder. So now the key is that we have to identify our capital R and our lowercase r. But the way to do so is notice that lowercase r is the section that is closest to the center of the main disk. So in this case, the center is represented by this axis of revolution. So we're going to drop down a perpendicular line and notice that it hits the equation y equals square root x first. As I said before, this is important that y equals square root x is above y equals x because this tells us that the inner radius or the, the lowercase r is going to be represented by square root x. But the fact that we're spinning around the line y equals 1 tells us that we need 1 minus in front of our square root x because that is the distance here this distance between the line y equals 1 and square root x is 1 minus square root x here like this. And now similarly we need to find this capital R or the outer radius. So once again we can drop down a perpendicular line and it's going to hit the equation y equals x so the distance between the line and the equation y equals x can be characterized by 1 minus x. So this space in here 
you draw out there is 1 minus x. That's the space between this line and the graph of y equals x. So now that we have this, we could go ahead and calculate the other values that, are, that we need. We need r squared, or in this case capital R squared, which is generated by 1 minus x squared. And now I'm not going to really go through the algebra. I'll go through this relatively quick. We have 1 minus 2x plus x squared. And now if we're, we're looking for lowercase r squared, this is we have 1 minus square root x, this quantity squared. And when we work this out, we have 1 minus 2 radical x plus x like this when we multiply negative radical x times negative radical x. Because we are between 0 and 1, we have this plus x on the outside. So now that we have this written out, we can begin to set up our integral. So we're looking for the integral, or we're, we're evaluating the integral between 0 and 1 of pi. And now we have, we're going to factor out the pi. We have pi, and now we're going to replace. We have r squared minus lowercase r squared dx. So the strategy here is we're taking these little cross sections here. This is what we mean by pi r squared minus r squared times dx. dx represents that little change in the x direction here like this and we're going to be adding them up between 0 and 1. So what we could do for the next line we're looking at the integral from 0 to 1 we could factor out the pi and now we can replace capital R squared with 1 minus 2x plus x squared and now we're subtracting lowercase r squared, which is 1 minus 2 radical x plus x. And we'll put brackets, and we have our dx on the outside. So for the next line, we just have to simplify this polynomial expression here. So we will section this off so that our equations don't collide. And we have the integral from 0 to 1, we have our pi outside, and now I'll do this relatively quick, but we have 1 minus 1, those will cancel, the 1 minus 1. Now we have negative 2x minus positive x, we can combine like terms, negative 2x minus positive x is negative 3x, we have positive x squared, and we have a negative negative 2 radical x, which comes out to a positive 2 radical x. But we'll write it as 2x to the 1 half, because when it comes to taking the antiderivative, it helps to have numerical exponents. And remember, this is all dx we have on the outside. That aspect is crucial. So now when we find the antiderivative, we'll throw up brackets, or we can leave parentheses. We have negative 3 x, and now we have, we could write the 1 here to help us find the antiderivative. So the next power is 2 divided by 2, so we have negative 3 over 2 times x squared plus x to the third, and now we have to multiply by 1 third, which is the same as dividing by 3. So we're just using this power rule for finding the antiderivative. And now for the last piece, we have plus 2 times x, and now 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. And now when we divide by 3 halves, that's the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And we're evaluating this from 1 to 0. So for the next line, we have pi times, and we'll throw this in brackets, we have negative 3 halves. So now all we're doing, just to slow it down a bit, we're plugging in 1 into this expression. So we have negative 3 halves times 1 squared plus one-third times one to the third is one. So plugging in one is very easy because all we generate is the coefficients. And we have plus two times two-thirds is four-thirds, here like this. And now we have to subtract the result when we plug in zero. So remember, now we have to plug in the lower limit. And when we plug in zero, conveniently enough, everything cancels out. So we have zero plus zero plus zero. So the final answer, all we need to do is just add these three fractions. But what we'll do first is generate common denominators. We could have a common denominator of 6. 
So for the first piece, we could say that this is negative 9 over 6 plus 2 over 6 plus 8 over 6. So the first fraction, we just multiply the top and bottom by 3, the numerator and denominator. And for the second fractions, or the, the second and third fractions, we multiply the numerators and denominators by 2. So then our final answer, we have 2, two over 6 plus 8 over 6 is 10 over 6. 10 over 6 minus 9 over 6 is 1 over 6. So we have pi times 1 over 6, which is equal to pi over 6. So this is our final answer. Our volume of revolution for this solid, we wind up with pi over 6. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on solids of revolution integrals. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.